Hey guys, this is Fo. I got something new for you today. This is called Skeeter Pee. It's not Pomptini, even though it is in a Pomptini bottle. Um, it's a lemon wine. I know that sounds weird. It's not like Mike's Hard. It's not like any of those other hard lemonades you've ever had. It's, um, it's lemon wine. Uh, the recipe can be found at SkeeterPee.com and Minnesota Maker has a YouTube channel. He invented the recipe. His recipe calls for starting it with the slurry of a previous batch of wine. I don't make wine. I don't have a slurry, so I made one using a starter. I'm going to show you how I did it. Let's go. The first thing you're going to need is 16 cups of sugar. That is about 7 pounds. And the other things you're going to need is 3 bottles of real lemon. It's that lemon juice you can get at the grocery store and also some brewing ingredients. And that's everything you pretty much need. So you're going to measure out your sugar and you need about 8 cups of water in a large pot. So uh, we're going to put some water into this pot and after we got the water in the pot, what you do need is you need to open up one of your bottles of real lemon and you're going to measure out about a third of a cup and go ahead and add it to the pot. Okay, now that you've got your lemon juice added to your water, you're gonna go ahead and bring it over to the stove and start adding the sugar you measured a little earlier. Um, you're gonna wanna heat it up as you go so that the sugar dissolves, because otherwise it can be really hard to get it in there, but it will all fit and you'll end up with almost like a, a watery kind of syrup. So you get it all in there and you wanna bring it to what you think is about almost a boil. You don't really wanna get this stuff boiling too much but you want to get it up to a pretty high temperature so it's almost boiling. That looks about right for me. It's in fact, it's bubbling a little bit. All right, so uh, what we'll do, we'll turn down the temperature there. Uh, yeah, that looks about right. Uh, take the lid, put it on there. Yeah, that looks good. I'm gonna crank this sucker up to about uh, 30 minutes and go. Okay, so now I went ahead and sanitized my fermenter. I'm gonna be using a better bottle, but um, I've got this mason jar I'm gonna be using for a starter vessel. So I'm gonna make sure that's nice and clean. Um, so I got some star sand in my fermenter. I'm just dumping that back in through my funnel into my mason jar. Yeah, there it goes. It's nice and clean now. That looks good. Okay, so now I've got a bottle of my real lemon. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that into my new, newly sanitized fermenter, stumping it through my sanitized funnel. Fill her up there. Okay, and now we're gonna take a second bottle of real lemon and dump that right into our fermenter also. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes now, and this is what our invert sugar looks like. It's a little lemon-colored syrupy looking stuff. So I'm going to carefully dump that into our fermenter. Watch it, it's pretty hot. There we go. Okay, now I'm rinsing out the pot because a lot of the sugar is stuck to the side of this pot and we need more water in our fermenter anyhow. So we might as well rinse off our pot and get the rest of that sugar in. So here we go. Putting it in there and that'll cool off what we are invert sugar anyhow. It's a little too warm. Okay, now I've got this in our basement here where I do my fermenting and I'm filling it up with tap water here. Just right through the funnel there still. Just filling her up. And now we're gonna add the brewing ingredients I told you about. This is wine tannin. We're gonna add three quarter teaspoon of wine tannin to our batch. Remember the recipe is on skeeterp.com. Now I've got here yeast and nutrient. What we need is six in total, but only three for right now. We're gonna do the other three teaspoons later. So there's one teaspoon of yeast nutrient. Two teaspoons yeast nutrient. Come on. And three. Now the last thing is yeast energizer. All we need is one for now and one for later. So just one teaspoon of yeast energizer. This stuff is hard to find around my neighborhood to be perfectly honest. 
We're going to top it up a little bit more now. Uh, I didn't fill it up all the way before because a lot of those nutrients and things get stuck to the funnel. So we're going to wash it down and now time to stir it all in. I've got this uh, wine degasser thing I attached to my drill and I'm stirring it up that way. You can use whatever method you want. If you've got a bucket, you can go ahead and use just like a paddle or something. Okay, here's my sanitized jar for my starter. What I did, I've just used the, I just sanitized my turkey baster here so I can take a gravity reading. And now what I'm doing is I am filling up my starter vessel about quarter way up with, you know, the, some of my mosquito pee here before I ferment it. So there's about quarter, that's good. Now we cover it up with a dish towel, take an elastic band so it doesn't fall off. You're going to leave this for about 48 hours so that the preservatives can evaporate out of there. Here's my gravity reading. It's 1.074, so uh, that's a little higher than I think it was supposed to be, but whatever. I'm good with that. Here's my starter, about a quarter way up. It's a little too strong like this and maybe too acidic to get a nice starter going, so I'm watering it down, thinking it... You know, just like that. I, this isn't an exact science for me. I just, I just want to water it down so it's not so acidic for, uh, for my yeast once I pitch it. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that up and let this sit for about a day. A day later, I'm going to go ahead and pitch into my new starter. So I'm using Lavlin EC1118 because it's an aggressive yeast. And it was recommended online on some of the winemaking forums. So I'm rehydrating it according to the package. This is exactly how it's done, and I'm about to pitch it into the starter. So lovely assistant's hands here is uh, what you're going to see her, and that's her pitching the yeast. So uh, she did a nice job. So 48 hours, or 24 hours later, I mean, uh, here it is. It's been fermenting. The yeast is liking it. i got a crozen up there. Nice and bubbles. If It's hard to see, but you, if uh, you can see it, it's really bubbly up there. So it's active. We're going to pitch this whole thing right into it our, our uh, skeeter pee and it's been sitting for about 48 hours so that things could evaporate, preservatives and whatnot. Okay, so what we've done now is it's been a while, it's been a few days, I'm going to check gravity because we need to check it around 1.05 to add some more stuff. This is 1.06 so no good. 24 hours later, let's check it again. Here we are, um, let's see what we got today. 1.050. Perfect. Okay, now that we've got the Skeeter P at 1.05, we need to add the last three teaspoons of yeast nutrient and the last teaspoon of yeast energizer and the third bottle and last bottle of real lemon. So we're going to go ahead and add the nutrients first and wash down the funnel with the lemon juice and give it a nice good stir. And now we wait for it to ferment dry. Okay, so it's been about a week, two weeks, something like that. Now the Skeeter P is fully dry. It's got a gravity right around one. In fact, it might be just shy under in the 0.99 something or other. So we're gonna stabilize the wine so we can back sweeten it without the fermentation restarting. To do that, I'm using half a teaspoon of K-Meta and two and a half teaspoons of Sorbate. And we need to also clear the Skeeter pee because it looks very cloudy and not too appetizing right now. So to clear it, we're going to use Sparkloid. It's not gelatin, it's Sparkloid. And what this is going to do, this is some kind of clearing agent. You've got to heat it up on the stove. The directions are on the package. You dissolve it in this some little bit of water there. Heat it up, you hold it at a temperature, and then you can dump it all in with the K-Meta and the Sorbate. And this will stabilize and clear your wine. Here's another batch I have going, and this is what it looks like after it's been cleared. Much nicer, nice yellow pea color. Look, you can see right through it. This stuff looks gorgeous. Look at that. So let's go ahead and rack it to another container. I've got this sped up, obviously, and what I'm doing is I'm adding six cups of sugar to this other container while I rack it, and then I'm going to go ahead and stir it to dissolve with uh, one of my brew paddles there. So there we go, and all that's left to do is make sure in a week or two it doesn't get restart, have a restart of fermentation, 
and then it's ready to bottle and drink. This is what it looks like in a glass with ice. I'm gonna sip here. Ah, nice. Stuff's great on a hot day, was a hit on a barbecue, and I'm gonna do a lot of experiments with it. Go ahead and have some fun with this one, guys. Till next time, drink a Skeeter Pee. See you later. Bye.